Hi, my name is Heather, and today I'm going to show you how to add color to your SVG in Affinity Designer for Cricut Design Space. This is the second video of my series, Wacom plus Cricut, where I'll be showing you ways that you can use your Wacom tablet and your Cricut together to make some awesome projects. First, I just want to give a huge thank you to Wacom for sending me this tablet and for sponsoring this video. If you haven't watched how to create the single color SVG, then go ahead and watch that because you'll need that project in order to continue on with this video because we're going to start with our single color SVG that we made in the last video. I'm in Affinity Designer right now and I'm just going to open up the single color SVG that we made in the last video. So I'm just going to go over here to open. I'm going to grab the Krabby Cricut file and open it. And this is that final SVG. So after we had expanded all of the lines and it's all in one shape, this is important that we use this version. First, I just want to give you kind of an overview of how we're going to implement the colors in this SVG. One way that we could do it, and that I know some people have done it, is where we keep the outline and then we create shapes of different colors to go inside those outlines. However, I don't prefer doing it that way because I've found that everything doesn't always match up exactly and there could be gaps between the fill and the stroke. If you want a more detailed description on this, then check out the video that I'll link in the card that explains the best way to do outlines in an SVG. The way I like to do it is to have one solid black silhouette as the first layer and then all of the colored pieces will just sit on top of that. And then that way you don't have to worry about having any gaps. Things don't have to line up perfectly. It will just always look nice every time. So that's the way we're going to do it in this video. So the first thing we're going to do is duplicate our drawing so that we have one that we can make the silhouette out of. To do that, I'm just going to grab the layer that the drawing is on and I'm gonna drag it down and drop it onto the new layer icon. And when I do that, it will duplicate it into a new layer. Let's go ahead and hide the layer on top. So with that layer selected, I'm just gonna to go to layer, hide. So now that layer is hidden and we're only seeing the layer below it. And we're gonna take this layer and make it into a silhouette. So we're just going to grab everything on that bottom layer, and then we're going to go to Layer, Geometry, Fill Holes. And as you can see, all of his holes are filled. And if we want to check out our nodes, we can go to our Node Select tool, and we can see all of our little nodes that go all the way around him. And so now he's his own little silhouette object, and we can go ahead and lock that layer now because we're done with that. And then let's show the layer above it that we're going to use for our colors. So with the layer above it selected, we're going to go to Layer, Show. Let's also hide the one below it so that we can see what we're doing more easily. So we're going to hide the silhouette one. So with that bottom one selected, we're going to go to Layer, Hide. So now we can see that we have our original drawing here that was the outlines. And what we're going to do is make all of the fills into little pieces that we're going to turn into different colors. The way I like to do this is just to make like a square behind it and then use this shape as essentially a cookie cutter that's just going to cut out those pieces. The way we're going to do that is we're going to grab our rectangle tool and let's set it as a color. So I'm just double clicking on the color here and then I'll just pick something like red. This will probably be red anyways and then close. And then I can take this and I just want to make sure that I completely cover him. And then I want this shape to go behind him. So I'm going to click the send to back button and now it's behind him. Now I'll grab my select tool, select everything and we're going to do the cookie cutter. So we are going to subtract the front 
So we're going to go up to our different operations here and find the one that has the little minus symbol with the shape in the front and click that. Now he is cut out and we just need to separate the pieces out so we can color them. So now we're just going to go to layer, geometry, divide. And then this is going to make each of those pieces a separate piece. So we can grab the little background and then you can just click delete on your keyboard and that's gone. And then you might find some other little weird pieces. So like I'm gonna use my zoom tool to zoom in right here. And there's just some little bitty pieces here because maybe some of the stuff didn't match up perfectly. So I'll just delete some of those and then I can zoom back out. And now we can go ahead and start coloring. And if you want to, you can show that bottom layer because then you'll be able to really see what everything's gonna look like. So if we go in our layers panel and then let's collapse the one that we're on, we can just click the bottom layer and then we'll go to layer, show. So now we can see that bottom layer. It's still locked though, so we can't move it around. And I'm going to click on the layer with the color, and then I can grab his eyes and set those colors. So I can just double click on the color right here, and I'll set it to white. And then the other one. And we also have swatches over here, so we can use that too his little arms in the front i'll make those a different color i'll do orange now we have crabby all colored but one other thing that we want to do is combine the pieces that are the same color if you've ever done iron on with cricut before then you know that if you have multiple things that are the same color then it means they're going to be cut out of the same sheet of vinyl so you want them to be in their correct place on the vinyl because it'll just make placing it easier because your customer will just be able to place all of those pieces at once instead of having to cut them out and get them all in the right place. So that said, we want each group of shapes that are the same color to actually be the same object. So we're gonna combine them. So for example, we can pick his eyelid up here, which is an orange. And then I can actually go to select, select same fill color, and that makes it easy. So now it has selected everything that's that same color. So all of the orange pieces. And then I'm just gonna go up here to the operations up here and I'll pick combine. And now if you click away and then you grab them, you'll see that they're all one object. We can do the same thing with the other two colors. So I have this red here and I'll go to select same fill color. So now I have both of these selected. And of course you can do this manually, but I just find it easy and less error prone to just do the select same color. And then I'm going to click combine. I'll do the reddish orange, select same fill color, and I'll combine those. And then of course you just wanna check it. So go ahead and grab it, make sure all of your pieces are together that should be together. And then I'm just gonna undo those. It's Heather from editing here. I was just editing the video and I realized one more step that you should do before it's ready for the Cricut. And that is to find any weird little extra pieces. And there's a really easy way to do this. You're gonna go over to the layers panel and over here, since we already combined the pieces that should go together, you'll see them right here. If you look at the little thumbnail, then you'll see like that it has his little hands and his little eyelids. And then this is just a weird piece by itself. So this is a piece that we don't need. We can delete this by pressing delete right here. You can also look to make sure that nothing disappeared that you needed. So after we click delete, we don't see anything gone or anything missing. And if there was anything missing, then you could just do undo, control or command Z. The next piece has his arms, so that one's good. And then this is another like weird piece that isn't a piece that we saved, so we can delete it. 
And these just show up because, you know, sometimes there might be itty bitty little like holes and stuff or things like that, just depending on how it was illustrated, then you don't want those little itty bits to get cut out. So I'm just going to delete, oops, and then see, I accidentally deleted his little eye stem thing here. So I'm just going to do undo, command or control Z, and then I could just go down and delete the other little pieces. So now we have the light orange and the darker orange, his mouth, and then actually from doing that, I realized that I forgot to combine the eyes because they're two separate layers here. So that's actually really a good way to check and make sure that you get everything too. So I'm just going to select both of the eyes and then I'll combine those. And then the little eye stems, I think I'm just gonna combine those with the mouth so they'll all be the same color. So I'll select those three things by holding down shift on my keyboard and selecting them. And then I'm just going to click combine. So now we have all of his little pieces here separately and he's ready for design space. So now we can go file, save as, and I'll name it Krabby Color. That's your Affinity Designer file. And then we'll also do file export. And we're gonna pick SVG for export. You can do whole document and just click export and save. Now we can go to Cricut Design Space. I'll create a new project. I'll go to Upload, Upload Image, Browse. Make sure you pick the SVG file. So crabbycolor.svg, open. And then I'll do Upload. And now I'm gonna select that and do Add to Canvas. And here is our Krabby. And he came through really good. If you go over to the layers panel, then you can see that these are separated in the layers that we had. So we have our background and then our colors. That's it for this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And as always, you can email me at heather at heathercash.com. Stay tuned for the next video in this series where I will walk you through creating clip art in Affinity Photo Studio that you can use for your Cricut print and cut projects. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so I know to make more videos like this. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!